So let's break down a squat and a split squat in regard to early and late propulsion. Good morning. Happy Monday. I have neural coffee in hand and it is perfect. All right, coming off a stellar weekend. Um, going into a great week, I think, but let's dig into um, Monday's Q&A. And this was with Misha. And Misha and I had a little bit of a time difference here, about eight hours, so Misha's from Russia, which you will notice um, in our communications. Um, but really on point, really sharp guy, really great question in regards to how does the early and late propulsive action influence what we perceive in a squat or how we coach a split squat. So there's a lot of detail in this call and I think it's going to be useful for a lot of people. So Misha, thank you so much for your participation in this one and great questions. So we'll just go right into the call. If you have any questions, post them up here on the Instagram or um, this will be up on YouTube later today, obviously, and you can post your questions there. Um, go to askbillhartman at gmail.com if you'd like to get on a 15 minute consultation as this call represents, and then we will see you tomorrow. All right, Misha, clock has started. Sure. What is your question, young man? Uh, so my question uh, is about uh, early and late propulsion as it relates to the squat and the split squat. Okay, So perfect. from watching a couple of your videos, as far as I understand, in the beginning of the squat, at the top part of the squat, that will be uh, late propulsion, and then the bottom part of the squat, that will be early propulsion. Correct. Right? And then, right. Uh, so, <coughs> I guess uh, my question is, first of all, if somebody needs to get early propulsion and they don't have access to mid propulsion, there's no way you can put them at the bottom of a squat. They're not going to be able to get there. So the, the, a better variation would be a split squat. Correct. Okay. So, so let's be really clear about what we're describing when we're talking about the early and late representations of propulsion, okay? Because people get distracted by, by extremities. So, so, so people will say, well, you have a contralateral gait pattern. Well, if you look at the arms and the legs, you're correct. But if we look at the axial skeleton, everything turns in the same direction, okay? Mm -hmm. And so, so if we're just gonna look at the pelvis, okay? Um, We'll, we'll look at, at the position of the sacrum, all right? So if I am in a position of early propulsion, that's a, that's a counter mutated externally rotated position, but it, it's the sacrum moving backwards, sacrum moving backwards on the ilium. So this is the yielding action that I always talk about. This is the expansive strategy that's associated with the expansion of connective tissues as you make contact with the ground. So you have to have contact with the ground to be really, really good at this yielding, yielding action. So when I have a left, let's just say left foot forward on a split squat, as I it, it, imagine I was stepping into a lunge, okay? If I was stepping into a lunge where my foot has not touched the ground yet, I can push this forward. The ilium will push forward and it turns the sacrum away from the front foot. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a late propulsive representation because the sacrum's turning away from the leg that I'm stepping with. As the foot touches the ground and I come down and I put that foot into an early propulsive position where the first metatarsal head starts to hit the ground. Now this turns the other way. And this is the yielding action that we're talking about. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is the difference in, in a squat. So a squat doesn't have the rotation associated with it that a split stance would. That's why it appears to be different, but we're, but we're still talking about the, the, the position of the sacrum. So as I initiate a squat and people will say, well, it's early hip flexion, it must be early propulsion. It's like, no, because the sacral position is what determines what phase of propulsion that we're in. So as I initiate the squat, I am, I am ER'd, right? But I got both iliums pushing forward into ER in that position at the initiation of the squat. So 
it's still counter-nutation relative to the position of the ilium, right? It's still ER relative to the position of the ilium, but it's, it's overcoming in that position as I initiate the squat. When I get below the sticking point and I start to re-counter-nutate, that's the sacrum moving backwards on the ilium. And that's why that would be the early propulsive strategy. So at the bottom of the squat, I need the yield. As I initiate the squat, I'm in the overcoming action of the connective tissues. The, rep, the relative position of the sacrum and the ilium are the same, but the connective tissue behaviors are different. So that's the difference between early and late propulsion. Early propulsion has a yielding action. Late propulsion has the overcoming action. So, so I'm storing energy at the bottom of a squat, right? I release the energy at the top of the squat. If I'm stepping forward, right? I have, I have stiff connective tissues as the leg is moving forward in the swing. As it hits the ground, I have to absorb the energy back into the connective tissues. That's the sacrum moving backwards on the ilium to create the yield and the, and the, the energy storage action. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yep, yep, that makes perfect sense. Does that answer your question? Sorry? Does that answer your question? Yes, yes it does. Uh, so uh, basically, if we want early, still you would go with a split squat because the, the top position, because of the rotational aspect of the pelvis, yes. you get the early, early propulsion. Correct, because I'm creating the rotation, right? Mm -hmm. That rotation allows me to be very selective. So I can put your left foot on the ground in a split squat and I can create an overcoming action, or I could turn the pelvis and create, or I'm sorry, turn the sacrum. I could turn the sacrum and create the yielding action if I want to, right? So that's not one or the other. It's, it's how I am, I am coaching and positioning people as they're moving through this split stance orientation. So I can turn the sacrum away from the front leg and maintain that late propulsive strategy on the lead leg, or I can turn the sacrum into the lead leg. So when you, when we were talking about um, the offset weight, right? Mm -hmm. so if I have a left leg forward split squat, I put the weight in the right hand, that's gonna help me capture the early propulsive strategy on that left side because the offset weight's gonna turn the sacrum towards the lead leg, right? Okay. If I put the same side as the lead leg, it turns me away, and now I create the overcoming action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, and then if you pull the front knee, so let's just say the left knee, if you pull it into yourself. That's turning, that, so that's just turning the sacrum. So you're, yes, I think you're on the right track. Finish your statement. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. So, uh, because, uh, so that'll also create a yielding, uh, uh, early propulsion type activity and then pushing it forward would, would uh, do the opposite. That is correct. There you go. So, so, so the, the thing that, that, that I want you to realize, and you're actually helping a lot of other people understand this by asking this question. The thing that I, that I want you to realize is it's how you execute the activity. It's not the activity that, it, that is, is fixed. Like there's not one way for me to perform a split stance activity. There's not one way for me to perform a bilateral symmetrical activity. I, I need to understand the, the, the mechanics of the axial skeleton as to how I'm cueing it to achieve the desired result. Okay, and then if we are, um, I guess I have a couple of questions on this first one. So uh, okay, the, the, first, uh, so the first one, uh, if you're pulling your, knee into yourself okay so you're turning the sacrum towards the front leg yeah you turn it towards the front leg you're creating a yielding strategy on the back okay uh, but i also heard you talk about if you pull the knee in you're biasing yourself towards internal rotation uh R correct because so 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 think about the 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 position and the the turns okay so I'm, I'm gonna walk you through, we're gonna use the left side again, all right? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk you through the sacral position, okay? 
So if I push the ilium forward and I turn the sacrum away, you follow so far. That's a late propulsive strategy on this side. So it's an ER ilium counter nutated sacrum right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bam. If I've got, so this is my lead leg on the split squat. All right. So I'm going to start to turn the sacrum towards the ilium. Okay. So this is an ER position. See it? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I'm going to start to turn the sacrum. So there's a point where this sacrum starts to face more forward relative to the ilium. And that's an internally rotated exhaled position of the pelvis. See how it changes, right? Then if I keep going, if I keep turning the sacrum, this is going to move back on the, the ilium. And then there's my yielding action. So I go through an externally rotated position. I move towards internal and then I ER again, depending how far I turn the sacrum. So the sacrum always has to move through this sequence of events. Mm -hmm. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah. So if I'm just performing a split squat and I'm doing it like the normal way. What's the normal I, way? So I'm, I'm not pushing my knee forward. I'm not pushing it. I'm not actively pushing it forward or okay. actively backwards. So the lead side is in a late propulsive strategy. Late propulsive strategy. Because the pelvis is turned to the right. Because the sacrum is turned to the right. The, 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 the sacrum, yeah, it's turned to the right. Really specific. Because we use the extremities to turn the sacrum. It's not about, it's not about the, the, the pelvis per se. We say the pelvis sometimes. But let's be really specific about the sacrum for now so we don't create confusion. Okay? So we've okay. got left leg forward. Lead leg is, is left. And the sacrum is turned to the right. So that's a late propulsive strategy. Go ahead. Okay, then from that point, I don't change anything and I go down into the split squat. Yep. I'm going, my pelvis, my, uh, I guess, uh, my uh, sacrum is going to turn to the left as I'm going down and I'm going to go towards a mutated uh, position, right? You got it. And then if I uh, pull the knee forward, I'm going to start in a more right oriented position. So I'm not going to hit that mutated position as much when I go down because so, I'm starting in a more turned position. So, so you use the right words. You said not as much. That's a key element, right? Because you're going to move in that direction because you've got to produce force. Okay. Yeah. Now, so here's, here's what I would offer. If you're not going to mutate as much, you still need to put force into the ground as you descend into the split squat. So if you don't get sufficient nutation of the sacrum, which is representative of your internal rotation capabilities, you're going to have to create a compensation to produce enough force into the ground. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna see another IR strategy show up somewhere. So maybe the pelvis orients its entire position forward. Maybe we see an excessive pronation. Maybe we see a forward head. So, so again, this is why we see these compensatory strategies executed in the gym because people are still going to produce internal rotation. You have to. There is no, there's no way around it. You cannot produce force in these externally rotated positions. So that's why we see compensatory strategies. So you have just answered several questions for a lot of people because uh, if I don't have internal rotation available to me, I will compensate. People say, well, why do you see the pelvis tilt forward? Why do they lack hip extension? Because these are all representative of people that are trying to produce force in an ER pelvic position, but they're superimposing IR from somewhere else because it's not coming from the hip. Mm -hmm. Does that make okay. sense? Yes. yes. Okay. Great call. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you for taking time on a Saturday morning to talk to me. You're very welcome, Thanks sir. Have a great evening over there in, in uh, uh, Russia. Okay? Yeah. All right. Bye.